Electrostatics, Charge Distributions. This is going to be a relatively short video because the main work in this topic is done in the examples. So most of the discussion will happen there. But let's introduce the theory and some terminology. Charge distributions. So we have point charges, line charges, surface charges, and volume charges. And it all starts with a point charge. A point charge is infinitely small, it has no dimensions, and we describe it with its total charge, Q. So the point charge is not a physical thing, but a good simple thing to analyze, and it forms the building block of more complicated things. We can take that point charge and stretch it over a line. I'm showing a straight line here, but that could be a curved line following some path, in which case, it can have a total charge, it does have a total charge, but instead we really describe it with a line charge density because that total charge Q is now spread or distributed over that length. So the total charge is simply the charge density times the length of that line. Now we can use this equation only when the charge density is uniform. If the charge density is not uniform, then we have to actually integrate to get the total charge. Now if we take our line charge and stretch it over the next dimension, we have a surface. And we describe that with a surface charge density. And in the case of a surface charge density, when it has a uniform charge density, it's the total charge is charge density times the area of that surface. And again, I'm drawing a flat surface, but it could be curved. It can be conformal over other things. It's just that it's confined to some plane, albeit that plane could be wrapped around something else. Then, of course, we can stretch that plane into a volume, and then we have a volume charge density. The volume charge is really the only physically real thing. Everything is a volume charge. It's just that sometimes it's a very good approximation and simplifies the math to assume things are surface charges, line charges, or point charges. But in general, a volume charge is the only thing that is physically real. So if the charge density is uniform, the total charge is simply charge density times the volume. And if that were not uniform, we would have to integrate rho times dv over the volume to get total charge. So in summary, we have point charges that are described completely by just total charge. Since they're infinitely small, it does not make sense to talk about a charge density. And when there's multiple charges, we just add the effects of each of those charges individually. We have line charges described by the line charge density, units of coulombs per meter. And so total charge in general is an integral, and we use the integral when the line charge density is not uniform, but when it is, it reduces to just the line charge density times length. And we can also calculate the total field from that by also integrating over the length of that line. Then we have our sheet charge or surface charge, units of coulombs per meter squared. Total charge is still done by an integral when that charge density is not uniform, but when it is, it just re reduces to the charge density times the area of that charge. And we would integrate essentially the same term we've been integrating to get total field. We're integrating the surface charge density. And last, and the only physically real charge is the volume charge. As units of coulombs per meter cubed, we integrate to get total charge, but when the charge density is uniform, it's just charge density times the volume. And these equations are very useful because if it's a weird shape, line, or volume, but uniform charge density, if we can just somehow get the volume of it, then the, sh the actual shape of it does not matter. And then the total field, again, we're really integrating the expression for the total field from a point charge. We're integrating that little differential volume as a point charge over the full volume of the of the charge here 
Now, the real difficult thing here is calculating the fields around charge distributions. The work and the derivations for this are reserved for the examples following this lecture. I'm just going to regurgitate the main conclusions and also illustrate here why those conclusions are important. So we start with a point charge. Now, point charges don't exist, but why are they important? Well, if we have a charged object, if we're far enough away from that, it looks and acts as if it was a point charge. We can't tell the difference when we're far enough away. So that equation is very useful. The total field around a line charge, we will derive it in the examples, uh, is given on the right. Notice the one over rho dependence. Rho is the distance from that line charge. So it decays as you go away from the line charge. Now, maybe we were expecting the one over rho squared type of dependence. That happens for the point charge when the energy is distributing itself over the area of a sphere. Well, here it's not distributing itself in the same way. It's only distributing that energy over a circle. It's uniform in the vertical direction. So we only get a one over rho dependence. And notice the field is pointed straight out from that charge. If we have a surface charge, this has no distance dependence. The field is the same no matter how far you are away from that. And if that seems counterintuitive, think of it in terms of scalability. If you zoom in on a particular part of that surface charge or zoom out, you're really seeing the same picture. So it really has to be uniform. And it turns out it's charge density divided by two and it's directed straight away from that, that surface charge, assuming that's a positive charge. If it were a negative charge, the fields would be pointing toward it. So no distance dependence here. So the last thing we'll do here is step you through the recipe of how to calculate fields around charge distributions. And that will lead you into all of the examples that follow this. And that's really where I think the learning will happen and tie together a lot of what we've talked about here. So here's the recipe. As usual, we'll start by drawing the problem, label all the dimensions and parameters. I strongly recommend always sketching your problems and labeling everything. And the, the cleaner and more organized you can make that drawing, I think the easier and more intuitive solving that problem will be. Then we choose a coordinate system. Very much we choose a coordinate system that's about the same shape as our device. If our charge distribution is a sphere, we'll choose spherical coordinates. If our charge distribution looks like a box, we'll choose Cartesian coordinates and so on. Usually that choice of coordinate system is obvious. The next thing we'll do is we'll write the general equation. We could be asked for total charge or we could be asked for total field. And so we'll write the general equation here. And these in a sense are, are really independent of the coordinate system we chose. So we can write the general equation and then start throwing in the, the differential volume, differential surface, differential length, depending which coordinate system we chose. Then we have to write expressions for everything. Is the charge density a function of something? We'll have some expression for differential length or differential area, depending on our coordinate system. We throw all of that into the integral. Then we need to choose our limits of integration. So if we're integrating through the volume of a sphere, for example, we'll be integrating over radius, we'll be integrating over theta and integrating over phi, and we have to choose. Do we go from negative R to positive R? Do we go from zero to R? And really, any combination is possible as long as your limits cover and fill that sphere exactly with no redundancy and no missing parts. So this is probably mathematically the most challenging part, solving the integral. And if we've done our job choosing a coordinate system and all that, our job should be easier. And when we're done, we interpret the result.